All right, I think we're good to go now. Let me move my camera light off to the side. And also, I'm going to uh, stop sharing for just a second, just so I can wave and say hello to the folks who are there. And I want to thank you for attending this month's Library and Info Pro Marketing Tool Talk. And if you don't remember who I am, hi, I'm Jennifer. Um, in Telegraph Research, I'm a strategic library marketing consulting firm, a library trainer and a speaker. And you also may know me online on Twitter and other places as the Info Hound. And I love doing research and seeking out new tech and new gadgets, apps and tools. And I'm even more excited that these days I get paid to talk about those sorts of things in webinars, training, and I write articles. I write a regular column for Information Today's Marketing Library Services newsletter on tools to use. And I'm looking for, pardon me, <laughs> there it is right there. There's the Marketing Library Services. And this most recent issue was about live and streaming video. I am also the new co-editor of a new open access peer reviewed journal for the Library Marketing Journal. And all of this coordinates with the fact that I'm a former marketing ad exec later got my MLS, and now I get to talk tools, library marketing, and help libraries tell their stories. So let's get right into talking about tools, and what are we going to talk about in today's webinar? So we're going to do that, and we're going to do, oh, we're going to do that. Let me know if you're, uh, oh, now let's see, now where did my chat window go? It needs to stay where I put it. So let me know, make sure that you're seeing everything. You're seeing the uh, screen here. In fact, you know what? Instead of doing this, we're going to share. Yes, the whole desktop. I know you're going to see everything because wouldn't it be better if you could see that big like that? Yes, excellent. So what am I going to show you today? Well, I could try to show at least one favorite tool that I like. I try to show in the tool talks a tool that I think is likely new to you, um, one that maybe you haven't heard of or you haven't used much in the past for marketing or communications. And I like showing a tool that I've been exploring more recently and invite you to explore it with me and let me know whether or not we think that's a tool that's good to keep in our toolboxes um, for our you know, very budget conscious um, library and info pro marketing. And today's talk is about some social media monitoring and metrics tools. In the past, we've talked about writing and tips for writing better, talked about video tools. Don't worry, I will talk video tools again because that's a particular favorite of mine. Now, one reason why are we talking about social media monitoring and metrics? Largely because you have to measure what matters. And what matters usually isn't the sheer number of fans or followers that your organization has. Um, some people talk about things like reach and like, you know, or number of followers as a, as a vanity metric. It's a vanity metric because it really looks great. And trust me, I, I really want to hit a thousand Twitter followers, but it doesn't mean very much if they aren't act actively listening and if they aren't doing anything. So engagement is really the metric that is being pushed that we all look at more often, whether that's for the individual work that we're doing, for our nonprofits, for our organizations. And we wanna know what content was most engaging, what content was the least engaging, what got a share, what got a click through, what was actively commented on. Yes, likes do count in that regard from, from a Facebook perspective, but, we're looking for social referrals and social proof. You know, were things downloaded? Did it encourage a donation? Did it encourage a sign up for an event uh, that your organization is hosting? Did people then follow that link and register for another webinar? Um, did they call, call you? Um, it's conversations leading to conversions. And there are tools out there, most of the social media tools that have, have built in analytics and we need to be using those, absolutely. But there's also third party tools that can add on and, and help us make sense of things. And sometimes it, it gives us a quicker, easier to look at snapshot of what's going on. And I wasn't done yet, PowerPoint. 
Um, and we know then what's working, what's, where we're engaging. We can respond to interactions. We can do more of what's working and maybe less of what isn't working. And I think that one of those things that, why that's important is that a lot of us who maybe aren't social media geeks and, and that's not our full-time gig, that's not what we all do every day, and in some cases, even if it is, there's a tendency to be a little more scattershot in our camp and rather than thinking of actual campaigns and planning the measurement from the very beginning. So most of the tools that I recommend both in the articles that I write for MLS that I talk about on my blog that I do in the presentations and the workshops are either free or fairly low cost. I make note of where I recommend a tool or where I talk about a tool that is on the pricier side and I'll tell you for example, one of the tools on the screen, BuzzSumo. BuzzSumo has a free version. It gives you some cool information. You're seeing what's hot and what's trending, but the full BuzzSumo tool is very pricey. It's an enterprise brand with a big budget kind of tool. And I'm not gonna recommend that to any library or any information pro or, or nonprofit. It's, it's a budget breaker. But a tool like Lycalizer is free. Audience has a free version that's really robust. Um, Agora Pulse offers three free tools. Those are the ones I'm going to show you. In most cases, um, I'll show you what's available behind the screen, behind the scenes for the free tool. And if I pay for a tool, I'll tell you and I'll tell you why I pay for that tool. So Bitly. I'm going to guess that most, most folks are familiar with Bitly. Um, and if you're not, then, well, great, this is going to be a quick introduction. It is a link shortener for when you get those really, really long URLs. Um, but it's more than that because it's statistics and tracking. And by using Bitly, you're going to see where a link was shared. You're going to see the referral traffic sources, the number of unique users that are sharing that particular link, and the shares over time. And, you know, so you can see where that URL went to. And tracking is important. And it's better if you can control the tracking for something rather than relying on the shortened link and tracking that's maybe in um, Hootsuite with the, if you've ever seen the O-W-L-Y, that's their short version of a link. Um, yes, it's pretty. And sometimes you can, if you pay for the enterprise versions of Bitly, you can get custom branded. Um, short links like I believe it's ESP.in or ES.pn has a shortened branded version for ESPN. Um, but you can customize short links. Did you know that? And so this is for example, um, am I in my account? I'm in my account. <laughs> Sorry, because I also manage the Bitly account for a conference that I'm involved in planning. Um, you can customize a short link and I'm going to go inside the Bitly account just a minute and show you how to do that. The main thing you need to know is that there's a caveat. Um, even if you have a custom domain paid plan with Bitly, a custom keyword ending in a Bitlink can only be used one time. So think carefully before you create that custom short link um, in case you decided that, oops, <laughs> you, you needed to use that for something else, a different link later. It's also why you're not going to be able to go get bit.ly slash webinars. You know, somebody else got there first on that one, um, which means over time, yes, your short, pretty links are maybe not as short and pretty as you'd like, but they're probably shorter than whatever that monstrous thing was that you were starting off with. Don't forget also that Bitly offers browser extensions for Chrome and Firefox so that you can really quickly create short links from wherever you are on the web. Um, you don't have to be logged into your account at that time. And you can use it for redirects and to see a redirect history. So let's take a look and peek inside of Bitly right now, okay? And hopefully we're seeing my full desktop. Thing. All right, here we are. Um, I'm just going to make sure, hold on one second. I'm going to open up the chat and double that was not the button. But I thought it was. No, I don't want Firefox help. Sorry, folks. I love Zoom, but every now and then there are moments where it doesn't, uh, you know, do what I thought it was going to do. All right. So, any questions, everybody? Make sure um, let me know in the chat window that you can see. 
the bit.ly dashboard. Make sure that's what we're showing. And for example, right here, so this is showing that I created a bit.ly link for this webinar. Ha <laughs> ha, see, meh, that's kind of meta um, while I'm using it. And it's showing me right now the number of clicks. It's showing me where the referrals are coming from. It's showing me that, interestingly enough, so the United States is the top location, but that's not the total number of clicks for this particular link. So I can click and figure out where are those other links, you know, where the, where's that other traffic coming from? And I can see it over time. Coming from Jamaica in Denmark. You never know what the reach of your social media sharing might be. Um, you can also see in this case, and it, this is the one thing I'm, I'm still delving on because while I use Bitly to create the links um, all the time, me diving into the statistics and the analytics side of things is more recent. So that's something we can explore together. Uh, for example, I want to know what, what is it saying is dark traffic? Um, in this case, it could be a couple of things because I know exactly where I shared this Bitly link. I shared it in an email that I sent out, which is probably one of the ways that you got to this webinar. And I've shared it recently on Twitter. Um, and I did share it on Facebook in a limited uh, group. So the interesting thing is, let's see, I'm, you know, I'm clicking dark traffic, nothing's happening. I don't know why that is. Some things are literally dark and a mystery. But the good thing is that, you know, that this gives you more insight and information as to what's happening with a link. So it's not just short and pretty, you're getting actionable information. And that's one of the reasons why we want to use these additional social media um, monitoring tools. So let's flip back. Bing. All right, back to PowerPoint. Audience. Audience is a tool I started exploring about uh, three months ago. And personally think that it is really cool, very robust, because it's offering you a lot on the free version. And it's, it's rich data, and I'm so far, I'm really impressed. Why did, I at, why did I look for audience in the first place? I wanted to possibly change the times that I was sharing content to my community of library and info pro followers online, on Twitter, and when I maybe send emails, and perhaps when I was going to write blog posts and then automatically share them to social media. I wanted them to be seen and shared so it would make sense if I was doing that and promoting those things at the time that my particular community was most likely to be active and see what I was putting out there. So that's when I, that's when I looked up audience. It was one of the tools that I had been reviewing for another presentation and uh, a workshop. And wow, so you're looking right now at this on the left hand side is the big dashboard snapshot of everything that audience is telling you. In this case, this is about my Twitter account. Um, and, and all of this data is, is free. This is when you all you give them is, there, is your email. So in which case, I'm maybe not giving them my primary email, but that's okay. We all have more than one email, right? And they send me also a daily snapshot via email, and it gives me a couple of key metrics, and I can change maybe what it tells me. So it'll tell me, um, you've picked up X number of fo new followers, X number of unfollows, X engagement level, and it sends that out daily. I'm pretty sure you can change that and, and not get it daily. One of the other things that I liked is that, so this is this heat map down here where it tells me these are the times of days and the days of the week when my particular community of followers and engagers is online and when they are most active. The darker the color of the circle, the more active they are. So we can see that probably makes sense. Um, most of my followers are, are in America, but not all of them. And, you know, some parts of Eastern Canada. And so the community is mostly online in the middle of the day. Um, you know, 10 or 11 a.m. to about 2 or 3 p.m. And these dark, dark black circles, that's pretty hot. So, you know, Wednesday at 1 p.m., great. So I post a blog post and on Wednesdays and make sure it gets out by 10 or 11 and make sure then it gets shared so it's in that window and people are most likely to be seeing it and picking it up on social media during lunchtime. It also tells me, it pulls a tag cloud of, of those who are following me on Twitter and it says, 
these are the cities where they are most importantly these are the words that they're using in their bio so great now i know the people who are following me are the people who i would like to be following me they're involved in information and libraries in media and marketing and they love library and libraries and their books and uh, book and books that's two separate words um and if you're an organization that's locally based if you're a local library one of the reasons you would use this is you can see are you getting followers that are mostly in your city or are you being followed from places that are all over the country and and while that's nice that's not necessarily as helpful if you're using a particular channel like twitter to make sure that you're sharing about um, events and author talks and story time and if you're in Washington and the most people who are seeing it and liking it is this big block over here that says San Francisco um, well that may be a little bit of a problem <laughs> and and you're gonna maybe need to look at other social channels or change how you tag things or change the times of day that you share but it might mean that okay you're not sharing the right thing on the right platform because the people you want to see it aren't seeing it. So before we get to Likealizer, we're going to exit and we're going to jump in to audience. So this is the dashboard for audience. This is my account. This is uh, my, my Twitter account right now is hooked up to it. So it's telling me time zones. It's telling me languages, um, whether they have URLs in their browser, whether they're public or a locked down account. Um, gender if it, if it understands it and knows it all of this comes from if i click you know i can click and generate a report um i can get let's see i'll show you the dashboard and this is that big long chart that i showed you before with it's it's really a rich amount of data and you can see for example the number of accounts that might be following you that um, aren't terribly active and it's up to you to figure out whether or not do you want to still follow inactive accounts. Maybe they're lurkers. Maybe they just read things on, on Twitter and they don't share anything back. Um, but you don't really want a lot of people that are potentially following you that aren't terribly active. You may be, you know, you can also figure out whether or not you're getting a lot of influencers, um, people who are more likely to be sharing your organization's message um, people who are very influential within the fields or the industries of the same areas that you are. You can see whether you're getting followed by a whole bunch of people that are completely new to social media and might be more likely to be um, bots or potentially spam at this point. So it's a way to help you also potentially clean up your social media accounts. And uh, I'm going to be doing a few maybe, maybe live talks um, later this month on, on maybe on Facebook Live. Uh, with some tips on cleaning up social media accounts because there are several tools um, that are good for that. And see, I'm really happy here that, you know, right now, there we go, information, library, librarian, and marketing popping up the most often as to who follows me, which means I'm talking to the people that I want to be talking to on this particular platform. So again, I just think that the data that they're going to give you for a free account is incredibly rich with audience. Likealizer. Likealizer is a newer tool that I've been exploring. Likealizer, it comes from a company that has a lot of competitive intelligence and data, Meltwater. Meltwater offers a lot of wonderful tools that are paid and pro. Um, they offer the TalkWalker alerts, which is sort of replaced Google alerts, and you can get free TalkWalker alerts or there's paid versions. Likealizer is, is what it does. It, it is a simple, free tool that tells you how is your Facebook business page doing and it does it compared to other similar pages um, similar to what you have how you've identified your organization's page so if you've identified your organization as a nonprofit it's going to compare you to other nonprofits and again these are the you know compared to the categories that Facebook gives you to choose from um, so in this case I believe I had initially identified um, my business, Intelligraft, is marketing consultant, and then it follows educational consultant, and then something else. So it was giving me my score of 44 compared to other overall, and then it showed me compared to others, and other marketing consultants were in the mid 50s. So 44 isn't bad compared to an average of 50 something. However, like Eliza scores on a scale from one to 100. 
So if on a scale from 1 to 100, 44 is not great. And so it tells me what I need to do to improve. Um, the Library Marketing Communications Conference is a conference I'm involved in, helped birth and plan, and we're getting ready to have our third one this, this coming November. Um, I don't manage the Facebook page, but I can put the link in and see what is it score as. And the answer is 27. And so we have some work to do. And I've highlighted a few things. It's like, okay, we have a low engagement rate. And but we're pretty good on the number of type, the types of post variety that we give off, but it says our timing's way off. So maybe that's something I'm gonna go explore because I want to figure out what does it mean by our timing is is way off. Um, you can also see, and it'll show you the page or the like ranks for any Facebook page, just like around the world. Um, and for example, one of the top ranking in the world Facebook pages based on engagement metrics and for the like rank of 97 is an animal welfare, um, animal saving and rights organization in Barcelona, Spain. And it does not have millions of followers. I believe the answer is it has 400 and, I'll tell you like 460 something thousand. Um, so, you know, and, and it's got a rank of 97. So the point is that you can put in other pages, you can put in another library that you've seen online that you think is really doing some good things on Facebook and you can see what does it think it's like rank is and, and you can see why is their engagement good? What, what's good about it? Put in another nonprofit and see how maybe you compare and, and figure out maybe what are they doing based on what Likealyzer says? What is somebody else doing well on Facebook if Facebook is a platform that you're concentrating on? Um, I've seen a number of other, the Cincinnati Zoo, you can look at like like in, like Alizer and tell it just by category or just by country. So I asked it, show me the top like ranks in all of the United States. The Cincinnati Zoo comes in second and has a rank of, of 96 and it's got 378,000 fans. And that's a lot, but it's not as many as like the umpteen million for like the Walking Dead fan club. Um, the Weather Tech Floor Mat Company, small American, small business, um, is in the number 10 slot for really high engagement and it has less than 50,000 fans. So, and I've seen pages that ranked very well with 2,000, with under 1,000, with several hundred. It is impossible to have good engagement if you follow certain um, procedures or certain processes that it says these, if you do X and Y and Z, this is more likely to increase your engagement and make that a more engaging platform for you. Um, so let's go out real quick and just poke in behind Likealyzer. So for example, we can put in anybody, so I'll put in, um, oh, hmm. anybody wanna give me a page? Let's see, what if we did facebook.com slash the New York Public Library? I really hope that actually was the New York Public Library's Facebook page. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to get something else interesting, and that's why we're doing this as a live webinar. You might never know, but you can also see you don't have to be registered. Good. You don't have to be registered. You can put in and copy in any Facebook pages link free. So it tells me 68 for them. That's pretty good. And it'll say, okay, these are the good things, and we're not so sure about that. And we have an engagement rate of X, and that's pretty good. Now it says, so you click down, and it says timing way off, and it says, um, maybe this time of day would be better for you to post. Do be aware, Meltwater is a UK-based company, so it gives you the times in Greenwich Mean Time, so you're going to need to convert that back so that um, you're posting for the correct time zone for where you are and where your audience likely is. It's a simple tool. It gives it to information to you really quickly, really cleanly. It'll even show you links to some other resources for if you want more information on um, other expert tips on how to boost Facebook, check those out. I do not count myself, nor do I propose myself as, as a Facebook marketing expert, as you can see by my oft neglected Facebook page. I am working and learning more on that. So I think this is a, a potential tool tool to have in your arsenal if Facebook pages are part of your social media arsenal. Agora Pulse. Agora Pulse is a paid enterprise social media management and metrics and analytics tool. However, they give you several tools for free. 
there's a Twitter analytics tool and there is a Facebook page barometer. They also help you to run um, social media contests, Facebook contests. That's one of the three free tools that they offer. This is, I ran my Facebook business page through their Facebook barometer. It gives you this color coded heat map, green good, red bad. Um, again, of mostly of engagement stats. So that, for example, um, PTAT is something that's talked about a lot within Facebook statistics. That's people talking about this. It's a ratio of your overall followers and versus the ones who are actively doing something. They liked it, they shared it, they commented on it. The things you want to pay attention to it, again, engagement. And this is showing me a benchmark um, instead of by industry, Agora Pulse is pulling a benchmark by um, follower size. So the only problem there is, you know, it may be comparing me to, you know, I'm not sure what other Facebook pages less than a thousand fans might be included. Um, so take that part of the barometer with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, but it's again, it's really quick. You can, you know, hook it up and um, and just get a quick peek. I went ahead and signed up for a free trial because I want to dig into this a little more. I don't think necessarily that this is something that I would personally pay for. I'm not even sure that I'm recommending it to my um, my library and my other clients because the smallest plan they have for the small organization or small biz is three social profiles. You get one team member. You can have a one competitor analysis and it's $49 a month. Um, now that does include social media scheduling, the mobile app, a full content calendar, evergreen content management, and their Facebook return on investment calculator. So it's a bit like combining all of your metrics plus Hootsuite plus a few other tools wrapped into one. Um, this is what you see in the full dashboard and reporting. Um, right now this is coming out of the trial version. This is like a competitor analysis. Problem in the free trial version is you can't pick your competitors. So no, I'm not going to compare myself to uh, Domino's in the United Kingdom or Ben and Jerry's. That's, that's a lousy comparison. Um, so I can't really figure out how well it would work if I was a library and I wanted to compare myself to either to other li local libraries or to other local nonprofits or community organizations. But it is a tool that's potentially worth exploring um, just because of how well it presents the data um, and puts everything all in all in one. So, so I'm curious today what you liked and what you think you might try next. And for that, I'm also gonna share a tool poll because you know I get to like playing with the tools. So I'm playing with Zoom's tools, and Zoom lets me do polls. Um, now, of course, I didn't finish completely populating the poll, so I put in a tool here, Manage Flitter, which isn't one that I actually showed you today. <laughs> so, you know, go ahead and choose that in case the tool you really liked was actually, oh, I don't know, Lycalizer. Um, so anyway, so that's the tool. That's, a, that's our tool talk. That's some of the favorite tools that are out there. And... Uh, <laughs> Cool. So, sorry, I'll give it a few more seconds. Give it all the way up to what is it? A full minute? Because we're at 1:30, and I want to be respectful. I said that these could go 30, 40 minutes tops. So we have a few minutes for. If you have a question um, about a tool that you saw today, or you have a tool that you'd like me to maybe explore further, put it in the chat. Um, so far, audience is is pulling ahead in terms of the favorite tool for today. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to show you. Um, the other poll, just because, you know, I'm, I'm liking doing this. And there we go. Next poll. This one is to, add, you know, I want you to give me feedback. And you can also tweet at me at, um, <clears throat> excuse me, at the info hound, or send me an email about the marketing tools you'd like to possibly see in a future webinar. I've already got some planned and lined up. Uh, be talking more about graphics and photo editing tools, talking about survey and feedback tools, things like Typeform, um, talking about videos and, and animation. Maybe you'd like to, me to show in depth about Biteable. Um, 
there we go. Uh -huh. Put that over there. Uh, maybe, you know, talk about infographics, things like Easily versus PictoChart versus maybe even Canva. Um, so if you're interested, let me know either via the poll, via email, or Twitter the types of topics and tools you want to see me explore and give you an in-depth behind the scenes look at in a future webinar. Um, and the answer is all of the above. That's true. All of the above can be an answer. Also to make sure that, um, you know, share the link in telegraphresearch.com slash webinars. So you can sign up and I can send you the links to when the next webinars are. I generally do tool talk webinars on the second Thursday of the month unless I am traveling for a client workshop presentation or conference and it is still conference season. So that could uh, possibly happen. I think I might have to juggle some things around because middle of May I'm headed to a conference and, but I want to make sure that, you know, keep things going and make sure that you're still interested and share who, you know, share to all your colleagues, share to your friends. If you want to see a particular tool uh, talked about in greater depth, if you are looking for a custom webinar for your organization or a custom in-person training, obviously I do those. Contact me to figure out a way that we can customize something for your organization, for your training needs on any of these potential tools or marketing topics. Um, if you've got other questions or suggestions for me, show, throw them in the chat. I am going to stop sharing my screen hopefully so if anybody has questions or they want to uh, chat i can unmute folks if they uh if you want to talk and uh let's see Un can i unmute all maybe <clears throat> so if anybody or you can unmute yourself if you'd like and you want to say anything um and yeah absolutely yes i can talk about managing campaigns i can talk about um you know, using particular uh, tools in general. You can also definitely shoot me an email at jburke at intellicraftresearch.com so we can find a time that we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm really hoping that, uh, that you enjoyed and that you got something out of today's Tool Talk webinar. Like I said, if you liked it, share it. And I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday and a great week. I thank you all for attending. And I will see you next month. Do make sure you check on the website. Make sure you check and follow me on Twitter so that I can tell you in advance what next month's topic is about. Also, I am always looking for guests to uh, possibly be a guest host. If you're an expert in a particular uh, topic, I've got some other guest hosts lined up so that we can talk about things like Instagram marketing because I don't have a clue about how to use Instagram for sharing anything other than pictures of what I grill and the wine that I drink. Um, and I'm going to talk to some friends who are even more of a truly professional graphic design experts than me. And I'll invite them on to talk about graphic design for non-designers and some other folks about how they use social media workflows in their libraries uh, and organizations. So definitely look forward to that. I appreciate it. I want to thank you for being here with me today. And I'll see you for the next IntelliCraft Research Library Marketing Tool Talk webinar. Thanks very much. Have a great day. You're still recording. It's going to be brilliant.